good day. We will be solving this problem using the double integration method. So for this problem, we have to determine the slope and the deflection of the beam at the overhanging end. So here is the overhanging end, point E. Uh, we are also asked to draw the elastic curve for the whole beam. I already solved for the reaction at the supports for the pin so the pin the roller support at A it's 1525 over 36 kilonewtons upwards and for the pin support at B it's 2255 over 36 kilonewtons upwards the y component the x component is zero since we do not have a horizontal load uh, first thing we have to do is to draw the section or diagram. So here I have the beam with the labels of the lengths of the beam, 2, 6, and 4. And then this I, we will be considering the left side of the section. So I place the bending moment counterclockwise at the rightmost end of the diagram. Uh, I also labeled the whole length of the diagram as x. So for the double integration method, uh, we should always use the value x for the whole length of the beam. We cannot uh, use the other notation wherein x is just uh, from this part of the beam up to this part of the beam. Okay, so now uh, we would complete the diagram uh, with the forces. First, we have your uh, reaction at the roller support. So how do we get the moment of this equation? Again, uh, you take note of the uh, sort of shortcut for writing the moment equation. If we are going to use the left side of the section, all loads that would cause a clockwise moment about the end, about the uh, this part of the beam, because again, uh, we are summing moments at this point of the beam. So all forces that would cause a uh, clockwise moment would give you a positive bending moment. And all uh, forces that would cause a counterclockwise moment would give you a negative bending moment. So this one, your upward load would cause a clockwise moment about the end of the beam. Hence, here is the expression for the bending moment of the force, 1,525 over 36x. And then the next load would be the 15 kilonewton meter uh, moment. That would be counterclockwise. Hence, uh, th that would be negative 15 times x minus 2 raised to 0. Again, take note that for... Uh, an applied moment, we have to multiply the applied moment by the discontinuity function where the 15, where A would be the location of the 15 kilonewton meter. So that would be 2 meters, x minus 2, but you should raise it to 0 because it is an applied moment supposedly we do not multiply anything or any length to the moment but we have to do this we have to multiply it by x minus 2 raised to 0 so that uh, if you want to use the equation for here at x is equal to 1 or at x is equal to 0.5 uh, this this part this part of the equation would be just zero because you, you cannot uh, consider the 15 kilonewton meter load 
uh, before x is equal to 2. Next, we have the distributed load. So for the distributed loading that is not uh, extending up to the rightmost end of the section, here, uh, what we have to do is to extend this loading. So up to the uh, rightmost end. So we extend it by adding a uniformly distributed load of 10 kN per meter up to the end of the section. However, we have to counter that uh, additional load. So we are going to add an uh, upwards uh, distributed loading. So these two loads will cancel out each other. But if we are going to make your moment equation uh, for this loading, you have to consider the whole uh, load from x is equal to 2 up to the rightmost end of the section. Okay. So the moment uh, expression for that load would be here a negative because it would be counterclockwise 10 and the height times the base is x minus 2 uh, and then the centroid is uh, located x minus 2 over 2 from the uh, section. Next, the this one for this loading, the additional upwards loading, of course, it would make a clockwise moment about m. So that would be a positive 10 times x minus 8 times x minus 8 over 2. Next, we have the 5 kN uh, concentrated load. So it's downwards. It would cause a clockwise, counterclockwise rather, moment about the section. So the equation would be negative 5 times x minus 8. And then we have our triangular load uh, with the highest height of 20 kN per meter at x is equal to 12. So again, since this load does not extend up to the rightmost end of the beam, we have to extend it. So extending it, we are going to add a trapezoidal load. Again, if you create the moment equation of this load, you have to consider the whole triangle. Do not consider just the triangle and then the trapezoidal load. Before we do that, uh, you have to counter, again, the load that you have added to extend the uh, distributed load up to the rightmost end of the uh, section. So we are going to add here a uh, trapezoidal load again, whose the height of which is the same as the height of the uh, downward trapezoidal load. So again, the height of the triangle at the rightmost end The height of the triangle at the rightmost end here, from this point to this point, should not be uh, constant, okay? Because we have section the beam. It should be uh, a function of x. So how do you do that? Again, we use the... Uh, Similar triangles. So, for similar triangles, here, uh, the height of the triangle is 20. And then the base is 4. So the extension is here. So we can label the height of the extension as y. 
and the whole base of the extension is x minus 8. Sorry for the poor handwriting. So, if we do similar triangles, y over x minus 8 is equal to 20 over 4. But then again, uh, you can use the shortcut that I have taught you in class. Always the height of this triangle would be the slope here. So, that would be the height 20 over 4. And then the base or the point of application, so x minus 8. Now for the trapezoid, here, the height of the trapezoid, uh, the rectangular part of the trapezoid is 20 kN per meter, same as the height of the triangle at x is equal to 12. And then uh, the height of the triangle or triangular part of the trapezoid would be, if you will use the shortcut, still using the slope of the triangle, 20 over 4 times the base. So this is now x minus 12. Since we have established the heights of the triangle, we can now create the uh, term for the bending moment of the triangle. First, the upper triangle, we have uh, the, the force is downward, so it would cause a counterclockwise moment about M. So that would be, uh, I just simplified 20 over 4, so that's 5 times x minus 8. This is the height. And then the base is x minus 8 over 2. And then the moment arm is x minus 8 over 3. And then for the trapezoidal load, so this the this term this term would be for the triangular part uh, five again I simplified twenty over four times x minus twelve times x minus twelve over two times x minus twelve over three uh, this x minus twelve over t again is the distance of the centroid from the uh, section. And then for the rectangular load, it's 20 times x minus 12 times x minus 12 over 2. And this is x minus 12. And lastly, uh, the reaction at the pin support, 2 to 5 over 36, it's upward, so it would cause a clockwise moment about the section. Hence, here, this one. Positive 2255 over 36 times x minus 12. Okay, so that would be our general moment equation. There. Um, you can simplify that equation and then you can now integrate that equation. So this is just simple polynomial integration. Uh, again, don't. For the integral, don't forget C1, the arbitrary constant. There. I also simplified the equation while integrating. And then to get EIY, you integrate again this equation again. So again, don't forget C1x plus C2. So since we integrated C1, you would have to multiply x there. This is now your uh, equation for the deflection. And then, uh, what we have to do is to solve for C1 and C2. To solve for C1 and C2, you have to locate the supports. So again, we have a support at x is equal to 0 and a support at x is equal to 12. So if you have a pin support and a roller support, uh, y is equal to 0 at those points. What you have to do is to uh, substitute x is equal to 0 to the equation for EIY. There. Uh, the first term, this term, 
would be, of course, 0, 0 raised to 3. And then all the other terms, if you would uh, see, if you would see, the values at inside the brackets are negative. So if you're using your discontinuity function, uh, all of those would have a value of 0 there. And then C1 times 0 plus C2. Hence, that's why C2 would be 0. Again, we have to note that C2 only becomes 0 when you have a support at the leftmost end. If you don't have a support at the leftmost end, C2 would not be 0. Okay? You would have to use two equations to unknowns to solve for C1 and C2. Next, to solve for C1, then uh, substitute x is equal to 12 to the equation still of EIY. And doing so, we have this value for C1, negative 3647 over 6 kilonewton meter squared. Again, we note the unit of uh, C1, it's always force times length squared. We now have our complete equation for EIY. Uh, this would be your C1, 3647 over 6, and then C2 is 0. Now we can solve for uh, the slope and the deflection at the free end or the overhanging end. So what you have to do is just to substitute 13, x is equal to 13, to the equation. Okay, so here we have the result. It's 383 over 6 kilonewton meter squared. Note that this is this is EI theta. But the problem is not looking for EI theta. It's looking for the slope. Hence, you would have to report this value. Or you would have to report your answer in this manner. Slope is equal to 638.833, that's just 383p over 6, divided by EI. And the unit is rad. It's not kilonewton meter squared anymore. It's just radians. But if you are asked for EI theta, this is what you will report. But for this problem, uh, this is our answer. Then for the deflection, again, you would substitute 13 to e, the equation for EIY. And you would have this result. The value is the same. This is just, of course, a coincidence. So again, since the problem does not ask for EIY, the problem asks for Y, but we do not have a value of E of your modulus of elasticity and your uh, moment of inertia, we report our answer in this manner. The unit would be in meters. However, if you are given the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia, you can actually solve for the actual value of y. Just uh, divide the EIY by EI. Okay? And then lastly, to solve for the elastic curve or to draw the elastic curve, of the beam, what you have to do is to solve for the various values of EI theta and EI1. What I did is to use the change of load points there and then plot the EIY. So this is a plot of EIY. Just checked with the uh, slope for the exam. You don't have to compute this much values. What you have to do is just to compute at least three or four values. And then uh, to fully complete the graph. So there is your uh, elastic curve for the Thank you for listening and watching.